Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another week of online Sunday school. Yay! I hope that y'all have had a great week this week. I know that a lot of us were out with the church's ice cream truck, and that was so much fun, not only to eat ice cream, but to be able to see each other's faces. I loved seeing all your faces in person. It was great. Um, it was a lot of fun to just be out and be able to visit a little bit. And we were all safe and we wore our masks and we stayed distant from each other, but it was just nice to be able to see everybody. And I think that we're going to do the ice cream truck again over the summer, a couple more times at least. So we'll make it a regular thing and get some more visits in for sure. That was a lot of fun. And kudos to all you guys for inviting your friends to the ice cream truck. I saw a lot of y'all invited your neighbors and told your friends about it and just excellent job. Good job. Way to tell people about stuff that's going on that they might enjoy. Everyone loves ice cream, right? So today's Bible story is one that you may not have heard before. We've been covering a lot of uh, ones that aren't quite so common um, for at least our Sunday school class um, in the book of Acts. And today our Bible story is also from the book of Acts, but it's on a guy named Philip and this person he meets who is, is described as the Ethiopian. And that just means he's from the country of Ethiopia in Africa. So let's read our Bible story and find out what happens with Philip and the Ethiopian man. So here's our Bible story book. And as you can see, we have, there's Philip and the Ethiopian man. And it looks like Philip is reading something to him off the scroll. There's their horses, they're in their chariot. So let's, find out what happens. Philip fed the hungry, taught others about Jesus, and helped people who were sick. An angel talked to Philip, take the desert road and share God's love with the people you meet. As Philip walked, a carriage drove past. There was an Ethiopian man in the carriage reading a scroll about God's people. The Ethiopian man looked very confused. Philip asked the man, do you understand what you're reading? The Ethiopian man looked at Philip. I need some help. The Ethiopian man invited Philip into his carriage. Philip knew what the scroll was about. This scroll is about Jesus. Jesus taught us how to love God and each other. The Ethiopian man believed what Philip had taught him. While they traveled down the road, they passed by some water. Baptize me, said the Ethiopian man. They went down to the water and Philip baptized the Ethiopian man. I don't know about you, but so many times in my life, I have needed someone to help me with parts of the Bible that I don't understand. Um, all of us were babies at one time and we couldn't even read. And so someone had to teach us how to read and read our Bibles. And even as we grow older and we start being able to read our Bibles, there's still a lot of big words in there. Some of the words, I don't even know, some of the time. And there's just a lot of stuff that may be kind of confusing about it. Even grown-up adults, let me tell you a secret. Even sometimes Pastor Earl and Pastor Belinda and Pastor Tim get confused by parts of the Bible. It's confusing sometimes. That's one of the one of the things about the Bible is that no one fully understands all of it. And that's why we study it so much is because we're trying to figure out what's going on so we can tell others what's going on. But some things about it are just really confusing. We have to study it a lot, a lot, a lot. And we may never understand, but that's okay. It's just important that we keep learning, right? So that, like us learning about the Bible, 
is kind of what the Ethiopian man was doing, right? He was reading this scroll, and back in the Bible times, uh, the scrolls were their versions of the Bible. They didn't have a big Bible book like we have, a big thick book with all the chapters and everything. They just had little scrolls that people had to write by hand telling the stories. And so this guy had a scroll about Jesus and he didn't understand all of it. And so Philip asked if he could help and he helped the Ethiopian man understand and I'm sure they had a lot of good conversation about it and then at the end the Ethiopian man wanted to be baptized. So just like the Ethiopian man needed a teacher and Philip offered to teach him, we've all had teachers and people who help us understand the Bible. For many of us, it's our parents or our grandparents, and for some of us, it's your Sunday school teachers um, and our pastors. Um, and even if you are in a class or a Bible study with friends, your friends, you and your friends can help kind of teach each other and help each other learn. And like I said, the Bible is so big and there's so much to it and there's so much that we don't understand about it. Um, and we can go back to it again and again and again and learn something new each time as we're growing, as we're growing up, as we're growing older, and as we're growing in our faith. Each time we go back and study the Bible, it can teach us something new, which is just really cool. How many, how many books do you know where each time you read it, it's just like a brand new story almost? That's the amazing thing about the Bible. Okay, so I said that back in the Bible times, they had scrolls instead of uh, books, Bible books like we have now. And so our craft is going to be making a scroll. So to start off, you take a piece of paper and I have written our verse for today, which is from Acts chapter two, verse four. And it says, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. So this is kind of over the past several lessons, we've been learning how everyone who is trying to be a disciple of Jesus and telling others about Jesus, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, which is what Jesus said would be with us. And the Holy Spirit is still with us today. So that's our verse. So that's what I wrote on here. And you could write uh, any kind of Bible verse, some, your favorite Bible verse about Jesus. You could draw a picture about our Bible story with Philip and the Ethiopian man. Um, just whatever you want to put on your paper. And then this is where the fun begins because you get to crumple it up. And you're going to do this several times. So crumple it and then unfold it. So it's kind of flat. And then you crumple it again. And we're going to keep crumpling it until it is just super duper crumpled and looks like an old scroll like people wrote scripture on. So I have crumpled my paper. You can see it is just super duper crumpled and it even ripped a little bit while I was trying to unfold it and that's fine. Uh, a lot of the old scrolls, most of them I would think, are also kind of ripped because they're just they're old pieces of paper and paper tears. So it's okay if it tears, it's still usable. And then you're going to, after you've got it super duper crumpled, you roll, it's gonna be hard to show you, but you roll the sides in. So roll this side in until it's like halfway and then roll the other side in until you have two sides of it kind of facing each other curled in and you can unroll it, see, and roll it back. You want it to look like that. And then take a piece of yarn or string or whatever you have on hand, a rubber band even, if you want, and you tie it around your scroll like this. And then it looks like a fancy, old-timey, biblical scroll. And you can uh, untie the string and unscroll it very dramatically and then do a dramatic reading of your scripture or tell the story that you drew on your paper. And maybe this craft of our scroll and our Bible verse or the story that you drew on it can remind us 
about the people who teach us about the Bible and then maybe also remind us to help other people understand the Bible. We can all help each other and learn from each other. I have my partially unscrolled scroll here so we can say our prayer together. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for teachers who help me learn more about you. Amen. So that was our lesson about Philip and the Ethiopian man. And if you want to read that story in full in your own Bible, it's from the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. And I recommend it because it's a real interesting story. So in the spirit of learning about God from one another, what say we all worship together in a little while online? The service is going to be posted in just a little bit. And as always, it's so good and lots of good music and stuff to learn. So be sure to tune in, uh, tune in with your fam if you want, or just however you wish to watch. Um, give it a watch and let's all worship together. And I think you know what I'm going to say next, right? I miss you guys so much and I love you all so much. And I know that for many of you, it's your last week of school this week, which is exciting. And some of you, I think, are already done with school already, so you are officially on summertime, my friend. And I know that feels really good. Um, so everyone who's finishing up school, congrats, and you can do it. And everyone who's done, happy summer. It's a great time of year, and I am celebrating with you. I will see you all next week for some more virtual Sunday school, okay? Bye, guys.